If you're looking for something fun, stylish, and still practical, well, you may want to look at a 2024 Mercedes GLE 53. This is an AMG, which means it has a thunderous and powerful engine under the hood. It also has very aggressive style on the outside, and it's still plenty practical on the inside. And for this year, Mercedes decided to upgrade a few little things. So how good is this brand new GLE 53? Let's find out. All right, I'm behind the wheel, so let me tell you more about this brand new GLE 53 and tell you about how it drives. First of all, this GLE 53 is an AMG, so it looks super, super good, super aggressive. If you look up front, you got that giant AMG grill. It's very unique to AMGs, and that emblem is so big. And then, of course, you have the very aggressive bottom bumper. It just looks like this GLE wants to eat you up. And then you have the very aggressive headlights with very unique looking daytime running lights. There's like these little slits and there's like four of them in each headlight. So the aggressiveness of this AMG is off the charts. And for this year, this GLE goes through a mid-cycle refresh. So there are a few things that change, but it's really hard to notice. Unless you have a 2023 and a 2024 right next to each other, you're not going to notice. If you look at the side, it has that nice, crossover mid-size SUV look, right? Big wheels, 21 inch wheels with this GLE 53. You could opt for 22 inch wheels, which have changed for this year and they're standard on the more aggressive GLE 63S. But even these that come with the GLE 53 look fantastic, 21 inch wheels. Also look at the massive brakes, cross drilled rotors looks fantastic and calipers if they were yellow or some other color that would pop out but you know what no complaints here the wheels look very nice and then you go out back of course the GLE is already very wide love the hips out back gives this GLE a really nice wide stance but of course you look at a bottom bumper those quad exhaust tips makes this GLE look even better so because this is an AMG, the looks is definitely among the best for any midsize SUV out there. So like I said at the beginning, if you're looking for something that looks great, this fits the bill. Now, because this is an AMG, of course you just don't get aggressive looks. You get other performance features. Let's start out under the hood with this GLE 53. You get a three liter twin turbo i6 producing about 429 horsepower, and I think 386 pound-feet of torque, made it to a nine-speed automatic. I'll, I'll get to how this powertrain is on the road in a little bit, but it's a lot of power. This GLE 63 with 4Matic, four-wheel drive, the 0 to 60 under five seconds, so it's definitely not slow, but if you want a bit more power, you can upgrade to the GLE 63S, but then, cost goes up substantially too. But in addition, you get air suspension, specially tuned AMG suspension as well, so that you can carve corners a little bit better. You could also adjust the damping settings. So that is also very nice and exclusive to the AMG. And you get a limited slip differential. So if you wanted to track this GLE 53, you could do so, but I'm willing to bet 99.999% of the people that buy this car will never take it on a track. Also, you get adjustable exhaust. So there's a button on the steering wheel that you could press and then it either turns on and off. Basically, it makes the exhaust a little throatier or quieter. You can opt for additional sports exhaust, but this one within the GLE, in my opinion, it's very quiet. So if you're looking for that thunderous V8 exhaust, you just have to go with a V8. This twin turbo i6 is not gonna do it for you. Now, what else do you get considering this is an AMG? Well, on the inside, there are improvements as well starting with the seats. The seats are still, of course, very aggressive looking, leather wrapped, but on the inside, you see this Alcantara material, right? So 
It's a dual combination and it looks good, it feels good, and it holds you in. So it serves, I guess, both purposes in terms of aesthetics and performance, right? It fits both and that's fantastic. Also, you see it on the steering wheel. The steering wheel is a combination of leather and Alcantara, and it does look different. It's the AMG steering wheel, so it's tri-spoke, but really it's more than that because the two center spokes are divided up into two, so it's really like five spokes. Kind of complicated, takes a while to get used to. It's all capacitive touch, by the way, so it's nothing that you really push down, but you can control your adaptive cruise control, your volume, your phone. Also, you can control your digital gauge cluster, you can also control the infotainment system, it's all within there. Plus, you get two more smaller screens, one to adjust the suspension and exhaust, another one to adjust the drive mode, which is weird because there's a button on the center console that also does the same thing. So there's just a lot of buttons everywhere. That's the one downside about getting into AMG, or any Mercedes for that matter, is you're overwhelmed with how many buttons and switches and knobs there are. Um, it's just something that you have to get used to. Now, I did mention about the digital gauge cluster and the infotainment screen. They're combined, so it's like one gigantic screen and it looks really good. And you can customize it many different ways. If you didn't like the standard look, you could go into off-road look, you could go into navigation, you could go into sport mode. There's a lot of views that you could configure your digital infotainment screens with. And of course, within each one, you can scroll up and down and see all the various things like your trip computer, fuel economy, power settings, off-road. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff to choose from. And the regular infotainment screen, not the digital one, it's running the latest Mercedes infotainment software. It works fine. It's nice. It pops out in your face, high resolution, no lag whatsoever, scrolling left and right. And depending on how you configure a Mercedes, there's a million things that you can enable within. And I'm not talking about just media settings and stuff like that. You can control your ambient lighting. You control when your lights turn on and off. You can turn on your massage chair. And there's wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, and there's a, a plethora of other things that you can do. You could go into a store, you could go into the app store. I mean, it, there's just so much, I can't cover it all, but just know that there's a lot. And you also get 4G, wireless hotspot. I mean, there's just so, so much. Did I mention that? Yes, there's a lot. And in case that didn't overwhelm you enough, underneath you have a whole row of climate control. Again, there's a lot there. Most climate control is like four buttons. This one has like six of them. And then underneath, you have a wireless charger, you have cup holders, then you have a touchpad setup that literally no one is using because the screen is touch and no one wants to use this trackpad setup. But there's a few quick navigating buttons for your media, your map, stuff like that. Your volume is also there. And plus, like I said, you know that dynamic toggle, that's the same thing as that button on the steering wheel where you can change your drive mode. So if you wanted to go into sport or dynamic, or you wanna go into snow mode, whatever you want, there's two places to configure it, which is really, really weird. And I did mention because the GLE does have air suspension, you could lower it. You could lower it up front in case you wanted to make it easy to get in and out. And you could also lower it in the back too for hauling when you do wanna haul something, you can drop the rear suspension only. So those are nice things. Other standard features that you get inside, you get a giant panoramic sunroof on top, you get ventilated seats, heated seats, and from the driver area, if you hit that R button, then you could even adjust that for the passenger. That's pretty cool. Memory seats, that's pretty standard. And of course, because this is a Mercedes, all the seat controls are on the door panels for all all the seats in here. So next up, let's talk about the drive. How is the drive? Well, surprisingly, this GLE 53 is much more comfortable than I expected. I actually thought that, you know, this will actually be, you know, a pretty harsh ride. I was wrong. It's not harsh by any means. The suspension is super soft. Despite the fact that this car has 21 inch wheels, right? And AMG sport tuned suspension. It's very, very comfortable around town on local roads. This road I'm taking is actually 
a lot of dips and bumps and it's just so smooth butter butter smooth in fact yet this GLE 53 also doesn't feel like a big boat this is a big SUV. This is an enormous SUV, and I'll get to that in a little bit, but around corners and stuff, yes, there's gonna be some body roll, but I'm not wallowing around, so it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Also, I mentioned about the, the steering wheel already. It feels good. I will say the GLE is extremely precise when it comes to steering. There's like no steering play. I'm sure you guys could see it. Like like none. Everything could be felt when I'm turning the wheel, so there's no steering play. It's super precise, and it feels good. It feels good. The weight also feels good. Now, I would prefer if the weight was heavier for, for something like this for a little bit more fun. So what I'm going to do is change my comfort mode. I'm going to change it to Sport Plus right now. I could tell. Immediately, <laughs> the car downshifted, uh, so... The, the throttle and the transmission change, but as for steering, did it get stiffer or harder? No, it doesn't seem like, yeah, it seems like the sport tuning is really just for the engine and suspension, not so much the steering. So actually I would prefer if the steering was tougher, right? So you may be wondering, well, what's so fun about it then? Well, deceleration because AMG or Mercedes knows that most people buying this car, they're not gonna track it. So what do they want? They want something that's very comfortable and very fast, right? So I'm gonna test out 0 to 60 in a little bit, but I have been driving this around for a couple of days and by no means is it slow. And when you put your foot down, yeah, you can feel that torque kick in. There's plenty of it, but of course, if you wanted to have extreme performance, then you have to look at the GLE 63S. This one, obviously not as much, but then again, it doesn't cost as much. This one, the GLE 53, starts right around $80,000, which is a lot, but still under six figures. The 63S starts at $125,000, so obviously six figure plus, and it, and it starts there, because if you start adding in some of the crazy options, then it could go much higher than that. So yeah, so it really depends on how much you want to spend and how much performance you really need. Whoa. Yeah, that wasn't zero to 60, but that was like 20 to 70 and plenty of grunt, plenty of speed. Not the fastest SUV I've tested, but it certainly isn't slow and you'll have fun flooring it every time. I only wish that the exhaust was louder. I, I mean, if the exhaust was louder, the fun level just goes up automatically just from the sound, but unfortunately, it's just a little bit too quiet for me. So what about practicality? At the beginning, I said, hey, this is very practical. Well, it is. First of all, the GLE is a massive midsize SUV. It has two rows, not three, but it is very massive. You're sitting on the inside. I feel like I'm as tall as a full-size SUV. You sit very high up. Visibility is great. All around visibility, large windows, right? Blind spot is great. So the sitting position is also fantastic because you're sitting so high up and you could just look down upon everyone. But besides that, it's just enormous on the inside. It feels like a full-size SUV. It feels as big as the bigger brother GLS. I really think the only difference between a GLE and GLS is a third row and it's longer, but in terms of interior size, it's massive. No problems with space. And look at the second row. Behind my driving position, I'm five feet 10. Look at, I have like 10 inches of leg room enormous amount of leg room and about three to four inches of headroom. So no problems fitting in the back. The seats are comfortable. You get vents, you get a couple USB ports. Unfortunately, that's about it. You don't get anything else back there. No sunshades or anything like that. Entertainment system, but at least you get some USB ports. And look at the trunk. The trunk is also massive. I really think if Mercedes wanted to, they could move up the second row a little bit and then fit a third row if, again, if they wanted to, but of course they don't want to because they want to upsell you to the GLS. 
but it's massive trunk back there. So you can haul whatever you want and you can fold down the second row seats and get more space, more cargo space. So it's very practical, right? So to conclude, am I a fan of this new GLE 53? Yes, I think Mercedes did an excellent job. They know their market. They know there are people that want a very big practical SUV like this, but also know that they want aggressive looks and performance to go along with it. And that's what this GLE 53 provides. I already talked about the looks, very aggressive on the outside. I love it. I love the exterior look. Inside looks beautiful too, elegant too. Right use of aluminum, carbon fiber, trim pieces, leather, everything inside, right? And because AMG, you throw some Alcantara in there and it looks really, really nice, really nice. So you got the looks, you have the luxuriousness, right? You have the performance, you have a very powerful engine under the hood, way more powerful than the normal GLEs and versus the competition, really. So you got that, you also have other AMG tuned things like exhaust and suspension and wheels. You get a lot of goodies. The drive is also fun, comfortable, quiet. It's insanely quiet in here. It's really quiet, right? So for a daily driver, this is perfect. So overall, I think the combination of everything is a really good one. Mercedes knows their audience. And I think those of you guys that are looking for an SUV like this, you should definitely go test drive one today or tomorrow or this weekend. Smash it a like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for my future review videos. Take care. Bye-bye.